Hello friends, welcome to Pharma Topos. Myself Piyush Agarwal and today I am going to deliver a lecture on serotonin as a neurotransmitter. So my flow of content will be like this: introduction, receptor, migraine, purines. So starting with uh, Gadam and Piccarelli uh, in 1957 proposed the existence of two 5-ST receptor subtypes, which is M and D receptors. M are believed to be located on parasympathetic nerve endings which controls the release of acetylcholine whereas D are thought to be located on the smooth muscles. 5ST1C receptor clearly belongs to the 5ST2 receptor family and was subsequently renamed as 5ST2C receptors based on its pharmacological properties, secondary messengers and deduced amino acids. So this point uh, is required to remember. Uh, 5ST1C receptors, the first to be cloned, has been declared non-existent and reclassified as 5ST2C receptor when it was found to be linked with IP3 production rather than adenyl cyclase pathway. The rat uh, with 5ST1B receptors and the human with 5ST1D receptors shows the 95% of the amino acid sequence homology, which are having the distinct pharmacological properties. So the right are having the affinity for the beta antagonists such as pindolol and the propranolol which is 2 to 3 order of magnitude higher than that of the human 5ST1D receptors and the difference in the amino acid lies on the 7th transmembrane span which is threonine in case of 5ST1D receptors versus aspargine in case of rodent 5ST1B receptors. So these are the point to be remembered. Again. Benzold Jerisliflex, which is characterized by the effect of vagus nerve endings which elicit the reflex causing the extreme bradycardia and hypertension. So 5ST has a positive inotropic and the chronotropic action on the heart that may be blunted by simultaneous stimulation of the afferent nerves from baroreceptor and the chemoreceptors. So this is responsible due to the serotonin and it, it can be antagonist uh, by giving the atropine. So 5ST receptors uh, is stored in the neuron uh, or serotonin is stored in the neuron uh, and chromaffin cells as a co-transmitter together with the various peptide hormones such as somatostatin, substance P, vasointestinal polypeptides. Serotonin is considered to be as an vasoconstrictor substance which is found in the serum after the blood clot and the origin of which is involved is platelets. So you could see friends uh, here the chart in which the formation of uh, 5-HIAA that is 5-hydroxyindole acetic acid takes place through the uh, tryptophan. Uh, basically this is used as a marker in the urine uh, which is uh, present in excess in case when there is a tumor in the adrenal gland and as a result of which hypertension takes place. So acting on the 5ST1B receptor, 5ST initiates the secretory and the peristaltic reflexes. If the endothelium is found to be intact, 5ST release from the adherent platelet causing the vasodilations which helps to sustain blood flow. But it is, if it is found to be damaged like in case of atherosclerosis, 5ST causes the vasoconstrictions and impairs the blood flow further. And 5ST 5B is found in the mouse but probably does not exist in the human. So remember friends this point. The role of 5ST2 receptors become more prominent in the pathological conditions such as asthma and vascular thrombosis. So if 5ST is injected intravenously, the blood pressure first rises due to the constrictions of the large vessels followed by fall in blood pressure due to the arterial vasodilation. Other examples include ergotamine which also activates alpha receptor. So tryptophan hydroxylase can be selectively and irreversibly inhibited by paraclorophenylalanine. In depression, uh, the level of 5ST decreases whereas the noradrenaline increases. So 5ST uh, cells uh, shows an unusual and highly regular slow discharge pattern and are strongly inhibited by 5ST1 receptor agonist suggesting a local inhibitory feedback mechanisms. The functions of uh, serotonin are hallucinations and behavioral changes due to the drugs agonist at the 5ST2A receptors and depletes the firing of brainstem 5ST neuron thus exerts the inhibitory influence on the cortical neurons 
and it is suggested that the loss of cortical inhibitions underlies the hallucinogen sleep wakefulness and the mood it occurs due to the lesion in the raphe nuclei or the depletion of the 5st by pcpa administrations which abolishes the sleep in the experimental animals whereas micro injections of the 5st at the specific point in the brain stem induces the sleep feeding behavior in the experimental animal it was found that 5st1 agonist that is 8 hydroxy dpat causes the hyperphagia leading to obesity antagonist of 5st2 receptor increases the appetite and causes the weight gain and selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor causes the loss of appetite control of sensory transmission which occurs due to pcpa administrations and the lesion in the raphe nuclei so 5st ssri and analgesics are found to inhibit the brain transmissions so here you could see friends the chart about the different receptors of 5st from 1 to 7 and their locations their effects their secondary messengers of signal transduction pathway the agonist and the antagonist here friends remember the signal transduction pathway of 5st3 which is ligand gated ion channel and uh, one more thing to be remembered is that uh, the 5st2b Uh, which uh, is located in the gastric fundus and is involved in the contractions and again you see friends uh, here uh, remember about the platelet aggregations that is 5st2a which is involved mainly in this and other drugs like uh, uh, this uh, 5st2 antagonist is important to be remembered 5st3 ht3 antagonist to be remembered and uh, 5st1a agonist to be remembered and uh, uh, again uh, friends remember here about uh, the distribution in 5st1b pathway which is involved in the presynaptic inhibitions and pulmonary vasoconstrictions which is important and coming to 5st1d cerebral vasoconstriction occurs so these few points are important which are to be remembered in this chart so again you see friends here the drugs that is uh, uh, algatamine dihydro algatamine ergometrin bromocriptin methylsargides they are actions on the 5st receptors uh, alpha receptors also these are the points to be remembered dopamine receptors uh, it uh, bromocriptin was found to be agonist at dopamine receptors thus helpful in the parkinson disorder uterine uh, contractions is maximum in ergometrin and uh, the main use of this is uh, prevent the postpartum hemorrhage and methylsargide that is in carcinoid syndrome and the side effects of the methylsargide is important that is retroperitoneal mediastinal fibrosis and uh, ergotamine that is uh, emesis vasoconstrictions avoid in the peripheral vaso uh, vascular disease and also in pregnancy so coming to migraine migraine is an attack consist of an initial visual disturbances that is aura in which a flickering pattern followed by a blind spot that is scintillating scotoma progresses gradually across an area of the visual field this fails uh, uh, this visual disturbances is followed about 30 minute later by a severe throbbing headache starting unilaterally often accompanied by photophobia nausea vomiting prostration which lasts for an hours So here you could see friend the graph between the cerebral blood flow percentage for uh, with the hours uh, as the time increases the headache also found to be increased uh, first aura occurs followed by the headache and you could see the cerebral blood flow is decreased in case of aura but in case of headache the vasodilation occurs and the blood flow is increased so these are uh, the few pictures uh, which helps you to remember easily about the difference between the headaches that is you could see their type of of headaches like tmj sinuses cluster tension migraine neck uh, here sinus cluster tension migraine these are the other pictures and also these pictures like tension sinus cluster and migraine so these are the different pictures you could uh, this uh, these are to be given for you to remember this uh, for your easiness so here is the pathophysiological mechanism uh, which deals with uh, 5st receptor uh, 
so uh, tryptophan uh, activates the vascular endothelium thereby uh, the nitric oxide releases and which cause the dilation of the extracellular vessels and the sensitization of the sensory nerve thus sending the sensory nerve discharge and thereby as a result of which pain and aura occurs so this also controls the central pain sensitizations so these are the peripheral mechanisms uh, the not peptide release that is cgrp peptide which is important which activates the neuroinflammations and thereby release of the mediators like prostaglandin and kininogen also activates the synergistic action of vascular endothelium so the in case of central mechanism unknown factors which causes the spreading depressions and thereby aura and central pain sensitization thereby the pain so these are the drugs to be used which act as a blocker that is 5st2 antagonist and acids 5st1 d agonists uh, the receptor of which is involved is friends here 5st2 receptor which is important so coming to the theory of the migraine there are the three th theories starting with first hypothesis that is the classic vascular theory which is implicated an initial hemorrhally mediated intracerebral vasoconstriction causing the aura followed by an extracerebral vasodilation causing the headache so the headache usually begins during the initial vasoconstrictor phase the vasoconstrictor starts posteriorly and gradually spreads for forwards over the hemisphere implying a neural rather than a humoral cause the second hypothesis which is brain hypothesis links migraine to the phenomenon of the cortical spread depression the aura phase of the migraine attack is associated with a wave of spreading depressions the third hypothesis which is sensory nerve hypothesis proposes that the activation of the trigeminal nerve terminals in the meninges and extracranial vessels in the primary event in the migraine attack so this would cause the pain directly and will also induce the inflammatory changes to the release of the neuropeptide and from the sensory nerve terminals so friends uh, there are some models of the migraine which are developed in the animals for example if applying the kcl topically uh, migraine could be induced uh, as well as use of capsaicin which is also can cause the migraine uh, because of release of the cgrp peptide as a result of which the pain receptor is activated and thus the migraine is produced so there is a sharp increase in the urinary excretion of the 5st metabolite that is the 5HIAA during the attack the blood concentration of the 5st falls probably because of the depletion of the platelet that is in 5st so coming to carcinoid syndrome which is important which is a disorder associated with the malignant tumor of the enterochromaffin cells which usually arise in the small intestine and metastasis to the liver this tumor secretes a variety of the chemical mediators that is 5st which is the most important but other neuropeptides like substance p and prostaglandins bradykinin also produced so the release of these substances into the blood stream results in the severe unpleasant symptoms like flushing diarrhea bronchoconstriction hypotensions which may cause the dizziness or the fainting so excretion of this uh, 5hia hydroxyndolastic acid in the syndrome may increase that 20 folds and is raised even the during periods when the tumor is asymptomatic so 5st2 antagonist and the octreotide as a treatment has been employed so this 5hia i have already discussed previously in the chart how it is formed so coming to this chart of the migraine basically migraine is uh, the treatment involves the acute treatment and the prophylaxis treatment there are the different drugs like sumatriptan almotriptan etc uh, Algatamine is also used as a treatment. Methylsergide, pizotifen, ciproheptadine, propranolol. The point to be remembered about the, these drugs are uh, these drugs are having the less side effect here. Elmo, Eli, Frova, Triptan, and all. And uh, the bioavailability is also uh, improved and with a reduced cardiac side effect. Whereas in case of sumatriptan, it is contraindicated in the patients with the coronary disorders. And thus it causes the dysrhythmia and coronary vasoconstrictions and in case of uh, uh, you see ciproheptadine uh, which is uh, side effect is the sedation and the weight gain which is important because it blocks the histamine receptor and also the calcium channel and thus is it is rarely used and uh, coming to propranolol uh, it uh, the main side effect is the bronchoconstrictions uh, the mechanism of this effect is not clear so friends please remember these charts which is important and again other drugs like aspirin calcium channel blockers antidepressants could also be used 
so this is the simplest chart like uh, other drugs like propranolol amitriptyline calcium channel blockers anti epileptic drugs is also used so uh, need for the migraine prophylaxis and unsatisfactory response to the acute therapy two or more attack per month that interferes with the patient's daily routine contraindications to the acute treatment or the adverse effect related to them and the use of abortive medications greater than two times per week so these are the drugs to be choose chosen if adverse effect is developed then the different drug is been imparted and thus the results is achieved so here you could see about melatonin which is uh, synthesized in the pineal and endocrine gland that plays a role in establishing the circadian rhythm the glands contain the two enzymes which is not found elsewhere which converts the 5ST by acetylations and orthomethylations to the melatonin and its hormonal product so melatonin secretion is high in night and low by day this rhythm is controlled by the input from the re retina via noradrenergic retinohypothalamic tract that terminates in the suprachiasmatic nucleus in the hypothalamus a structure often termed as biological clock which generates the circadian rhythm. So the suprachiasmatic nucleus controls the pineal not directly but via sympathetic fiber supplying the gland. This retinal control system serves to inhibit the melatonin secretions when the light intensity is high. It does not itself generate the circadian rhythm but rather entrains it to the light and dark cycle. So this rhythm uh, includes the rhythmic secretion of the melatonin continuous uh, even in the absence of light dark cues but usually with the periodicity rather longer than 24 hours so melatonin are typically gpcr which is found in the brain and the retina but also in the peripheral tissues so given orally it is well absorbed and quickly metabolized its plasma have that is few minutes so it has been promoted as a means of controlling the jet lag or of improving the performance of the night shift workers based on its ability to reset the circadian clock and control the studies have confirmed that the melatonin given in the evening can alleviate the effect of jet lag here you could see friends that the uh, picture of si healthy sinus and the sinusitis which is uh, marked by the inflamed sinus linings and thus the excess mucus and infections and here you could see the uh, melatonin formations uh, starting with the tryptophan uh, to the formation of the melatonin by passing the 5ST so uh, here the receptor which is involved is beta receptors uh, which activate the CAM pathway and thereby then nucle uh, nucleus transcriptions and activate this enzyme that is NAT and style transferase and thereby the melatonin is formed which is released and uh, one more receptor which is involved is alpha adrenoreceptors uh, which activate uh, the uh, 5ST release from the vesicle and uh, thus the release of 5ST takes place and uh, thereby the cycle is continues so coming to ATP ATP is a transmitter which is in the periphery both as a primary mediator and a co-transmitter in the noradrenergic nerve terminal the nucleotide is contained in the synaptic vesicles of the both adrenergic and the cholinergic neuron and it accounts for many of the actions provided by the stimulation of the autonomic nerves that are not caused by acetylcholine or noradrenaline so this effect includes the relaxation of the intestinal smooth muscles which is evoked by the sympathetic stimulations and contraction of the bladder which is produced by the parasympathetic nerve exocytosis is calcium dependent so ATP antagonist is suramine which is important a drug developed for treating the trypanosome infections block this synaptic response so ATP to function as a conventional fast transmitter in the CNS and in autonomic ganglia ATP is present in the cells in millimolar concentrations and is released independently of the exocytosis if the cells are damaged for example in case of ischemia so adenosine produced followed by the hydrolysis of the ATP exerts the presynaptic inhibitory effect on the release of excitatory transmitter in CNS and periphery. The secretory vesicles of the blood platelets store both at ATP and ADP in high concentrations and release them when the platelets are activated. One of the many effects of the ADP is to promote the platelet aggregation which is important. So adenosine infusion causes the fall in the blood pressure. A1 receptor has been characterized as the homeostatic receptor 
with the protective function in the many tissue whereas a2 receptor has been characterized for more specific regulatory function especially in the brain so adenosine in the uh, tissues come partly from the source and partly from the extracellular hydrolysis of released atp of adp or adp so adenosine differs from atp is that it is not stored by and released from the secretory vesicles rather it exists free in the cytosol of all the cells and is transported in and out of the cells mainly using a membrane transporter so adenosine is destroyed or taken up within the few seconds of the intravenous adenosine uptake is blocked by the dipyridamol which is important a vasodilator drug and an antiplatelet drug adenosine has been identified as a potential mediator of the cytokine release from the mast cells of hyperactivity of the vagal and other way air when neurons in asthma so here you could see friends the charts where the uh, atp uh, hydrolysis to amp and thus to adenosines and uh, through this transporter adenosine uh, act on the p1 receptor that is pyridinic type 1 whereas atp through exocytosis calcium dependent acts on uh, p2x and p2y receptors these are ligand gated and these two are the g protein coupled receptors so this way the cycle continues the point to be important is that if it is leakage then atp is directly produced with this is important so a1 receptor uh, functions are vasoconstrictions blockage of the cardioatrioventricular conductions and reduction of force of contraction bronchoconstrictions inhibitor of the transmitter release at many peripheral and central synapse neuroprotections in the cerebral ischemia probably through the inhibition of the glutamate release adenosine generally exerts a pre and post synaptic depression action reduce the motor activity depressing respirations inducing sleep and reducing anxiety a2 receptor produce the vasodilations include the coronary vessels except in kidney which is important inhibit the platelet aggregations stimulation of the nociceptive afferent neuron especially in the heart adenosine release in response to the ischemia has been suggested as a mechanism of the anginal pain carotid body afferent are also stimulated causing the reflex hyperventilations uh, the action of a3 is the release of mediator from the mast cells this contributes to the bronchoconstrictions now coming to the pyridinic receptor which is p1 receptor divided into a1 a2 a3 and subtypes which are gpcr response to adenosine and they are linked to the stimulation or inhibition of the adenyl cyclase p2 receptor which is p2x and p2y subtypes which responds to the atp or adp P2X receptors are multimeric inotropic receptors, whereas P2Y, which is of eight subtypes, are GPCR coupled receptors to the adenyl cyclase or phosphoinositol metabolism. P2X1 receptors are expressed in various smooth muscles. ATP is a co-transmitter released by the sympathetic nerve, and P2X1 receptors are responsible for the initial contraction. P2X2 receptors are expressed in many brain regions and mediate the fast transmission by ATP in the brain. P2X3 receptors occur in nociceptive afferent neuron and may participate in the pain associated with the ATP release through the tissue injury. And last, P2X7 receptors are unusual and it in that activation causes a large and non-selective increase in the membrane permeability. So these are expressed mainly by the cells of the immune system, which is important, and this they control the release of the certain cytokines. Methylxanthines, that is A1 and A2 receptor antagonist, increase the CAMP by inhibiting the phosphodiesterase, which contributes to the pharmacological action independent of the adenosine receptor mechanism or antagonism. Example of which include is caffeine, which causes CNS stimulations, whereas P2 receptor is blocked by suramine, an experimental compound in PPADS. Adenosine may be used as intravenous bolus injections to terminate the supraventricular tachycardia. so friends just uh, remember this chart uh, basically the transmitter involved is purine serotonin the blocker of serotonin is clomipramine sertraline and flozetin the type of receptor that is p1 p2x p2y 5st a1 to f 5st 2 a to c 5st 3 5st 4 to 7 the agonists the antagonists and the receptor mechanism that is gpcr ir uh gpcr again and ir and gpcr so the most important point to be remember is the type of gpcr which is involved here is gio in case of uh, pyridinic type 1 
and in case uh, and also the uh, in case of a 2a receptor which is gs coupled uh, coming to this p2x and p2y p2x is ir whereas p2y is q11 and io again 5st1af which is uh, io and uh, 5st2a2 c which is q11 5st3 which is iotropic receptor and we are at 5 st 4 to 7 which is gs coupled and still the question for the 5 st 5 receptor whether it is gs coupled or not so here are the drugs uh, the uh, so coming to the next chart here uh, which indicates the release of the 5 st due to the vascular injury and thus initial platelet aggregations so this this release activates the 5 st 2 a receptor and thus accelerate the platelet aggregations and thus the thrombus formation and hemostasis and vascular occlusions again this uh, release of 5 st activate 5 st 1 receptor thus the release of endothelial uh, of no from the endothelial cells and thus the vasodilations again this active activate the 5 st 2 a receptor causing the vasoconstrictions thereby hemostasis and the vascular occlusion so again uh, this chart uh, 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 same as previous but the difference lie is in the uh, different types of the receptor which is mentioned more appropriately appropriately here the secondary messengers uh, some of the comments uh, basically the point to be remembered about here is the subtypes and also the secondary messenger systems and the currently accepted names so again here uh, this uh, gene structure is important here which of the receptor subtypes is intronless or containing introns uh, and the signal transduction pathway the localization is most important and here the function the point to be remembered is about the auto receptor which is 5 st 1 a and 1 b which act as an auto receptor the agonist antagonist and uh, coming to this uh, uh, this site uh, where the location of the 5ST and their response has been shown and the subtype of the receptors and this is important basically this is uh, based on the electrophysiology in which the different receptor subtype shows the hyperpolarization, depolarization and the repolarization here depending on the potassium ions uh, whether it is increased or the decreased so these are my references uh, thank you for more videos and materials or any queries feel free to subscribe us at www.formatoppers.com